swapped out these injectors and I'm glad I put that little step down in the bottom of the adapters because uh, those little plastic cups and the o-rings did come off during the removal there's the o-ring it's really hard to get the light, the camera, and this tool in there but you can see what I'm trying to do maybe come out a lot easier without the camera there's that little cap I got that side swapped out for the Denso injector so let me finish up this side and maybe actually try to start this car I just got done swapping out all the injectors which was not fun because once everything had gas on it it was hard to get the o-rings back in the rails um, even with putting oil on it they just did not want to go together as well with the gasoline residue I guess but I finally got it and checked that there's no leaks and it's holding pressure so I guess now I'll try to start it again after I dry off all the gasoline that's on the intake manifold since apparently now the starter is bad since last time I tried to start it with the bad injectors I put the new injectors in and tried to start the car and it turned over real slow almost like the battery is dead so I let the charger sit on it for a while and it still kind of just cranked the same way and I even put jump really big jumper cables to a extra battery I got I have these I think they're double double lock cables I've started cars that didn't even have batteries with them before and I hooked those jumper cables up to this marine battery on top of the charger and the car's battery and it still cranked the same just real slow barely turning over it did actually start for about two seconds it ran and then died but I can't get it to crank again I even tried hooking this battery directly to the terminals but there's some smoke coming from the starter so I guess it's done the car does have 200 and 215,000 on it I think so I guess it's time I won't be too angry about it so I put the car up in the air I found a forum saying that if you turn the wheels all the way to the left it's not too bad to get to and it looks doable but I also noticed the exhaust was not in great shape I don't have my light with me but I can be able to see anything Yeah, you know, it looked a lot easier without the exhaust in the way and believe it or not the two bolts that hold the exhaust to the exhaust manifold just came right out uh, probably because I have a small valve cover leak and it's been dripping oil on the exhaust but I was able to get those bolts out easy enough so I went ahead and tried taking the bolts out of the kind of intermediate pipe they came out but the rear section and the front section wouldn't separate so yeah these these two bolts came right out and I went ahead and just cut these wires because I'm not I have to replace this oxygen sensor with my own wideband this is the catalytic converter it doesn't look plugged up from this end so that's good and then if anybody knows Please share the information. I think that's another catalytic converter. And this is the joint I couldn't get to separate. I tried hitting it with a hammer, which probably did more damage than good. This one separated. This one's different. I'm not sure really what's going on here, why that one's different, but 
I can't get this to separate and I'm pretty tired now so we'll revisit that also I noticed there's a bunch of holes and the car did have an exhaust smell especially when sitting um, stationary so that is probably where it was coming from I think there's some other holes kind of underneath the heat shields here I'm not certain but I think these are resonators and that's the muffler or they're all just mufflers I, I don't even really know this thing is extremely heavy it's it's got to be a hundred pounds I don't have scales but it weighs a lot there's a lot of rust on it the underneath of the car is really clean I'll try to get some footage of that before I set the car back down but I mean it's not that bad but there's definitely holes there and there's probably holes underneath the heat shield since they hold water they have like a fiber hopefully not asbestos blanket seems to be in between the heat shields and the pipe I can't even pick this thing up but around the seams there's some rust spots you can actually see one right there maybe it's too dark on the camera There it is. Since I don't have dual exhaust, I just have this single outlet pipe. I'm just going to get this remade with that size pipe or maybe three inch pipe all the way back and just put a single muffler back here. And uh, <clears throat> maybe one day I'll be able to make my own uh, dual exhaust manifolds, but I think for now a large maybe three inch pipe all the way back With less restriction it will probably help the engine make a little bit more power. I Just got the new starter on and I checked that it cranked good. It seems to turn over pretty fast uh, It did start for like two seconds and then died so see if we can uh, Get this started here and actually running.
once I got the injectors swapped out and the new starter put on, it actually fires right up. Of course it's loud right now because there's no exhaust system on it. So I have a 3 inch kind of universal kit, it's just mandrel bends and whatnot coming in. So once that gets in, I'll make a single 3 inch exhaust all the way back. And that should flow significantly more and uh, won't have a bunch of holes in it. So I think it'll be a good thing. There's some little things I need to address. Um, I just have kind of one of those filters jammed into the valve cover. Um, so I need to do something that maybe looks a little better than that. And then on this side I just have the little tube going down to a PCV valve, I think from an import car, and that goes to the factory location there. This is the manifold pressure line. I just have this here to make sure it doesn't suck in anything from it down there, but there's the manifold reference for the regulator. I need to figure out air intake. I'd like to make something that houses a cone filter on this inlet duct that brings in cool air from the front of the car and that would go kind of through a cone filter and then into the intake. I'm not sure what the hood clearance looks like. I might have to travel it more rearward and around. I don't really know. But the wires all made up. These are the Excel 90 degree wire boots for LS and LT1 coils. And these are the Excel super stock spiral core wires. I'm pretty happy with how they turned out. You know, this one's maybe a little long here, but I don't think it's too bad. Actually, I think I could kind of zip tie. Might just do some more zip tying. Pretty much it. Need a new bolt here because this one's too long. But I'll just kind of keep working on some of the small stuff here, and it's crazy. I go to start it, and the injectors are bad. So put a set of remanufactured injectors from a reputable place. I say remanufacture; they just clean and flow test them. In it, and then when I go to start it, the starter's bad, so I replace the starter, and now the battery's bad. So it, it kind of cranks the car, but it's struggling, and I've had it on the charger for a while. So if I hook the jumper cables up to an extra battery, it fires right up. All right, let me know if you guys have any questions in particular. I'm going to kind of keep trucking along on some of the small stuff here. All in all, I'd say it's a success so far. Thanks for watching. Bye.